Uh, so yesterday we were doing this power and AC circuit, the power factor. Today we will complete uh, transformer and generator, AC generator. So by that, by that we can complete this chapter. And as I told you, there will be a uh, you know uh, yeah, test on these three lessons, four lessons. Okay, when do you want to write? Do you want to write on Sunday? Uh, sorry, Saturday. Please, okay, update me after the meeting, okay, by the end of the meeting. Now, <clears throat> so, so now here we have power in AC circuit, the power factor. So the, this is the input, uh, this is the input voltage. V is equal to what? Vm sin omega t and I is equal to what? Im uh, sin omega t plus phi, okay. Im is equal to Vm by Z, I is equal to V by R, okay. Now, can we do after the test? Uh, no, that won't happen. It will go in February then. Okay. So better write on Saturday. Only it's four lessons. Okay. Four lessons. You can't even consider four lessons. It's only three lessons. Because uh, magnetism and matter, we don't consider that much. Okay. So... <clears throat> Now, see here, I will start with here. V is equal to Vm sin omega t. I is equal to Im sin omega t plus phi. Now, I is equal to Vm by z. And we have the phase. Phi is equal to tan inverse of Xc minus Xl by R. Okay, what is Xc? What is Xc? Yes, you have to come on. We have to do a lot today. What is Xc? Here. Xc is what? Xc is capacity reactance and Xl is, Xl is, what happened? I'm not able to hear? So we are able to hear. Yeah, yeah, tell me what is Xc and Xl? Inductive reactance. Uh, inductive reactance and Xc is capacity reactance. What is the, what is the formula? Xc is equal to 1 by omega c, Xl is equal to omega into L. And P is called power, okay, power factor. P is equal to V into I cos phi. What is phi? Phi is, phi is the phase angle. Phase angle between the input voltage and the output current. Input voltage and output current. Now, so I is equal to what? There are three formulas for power. What are they? What are they? So v, P is equal to V i is equal to I square R is equal to V square by R. And P is equal to I square Z cos phi. Cos phi is called power factor. Now we have only resistive circuit, purely inductive and capacity circuit, LCR series circuit and power distributed. Four core topics are here, okay? <clears throat> so, so here phi is equal to what? Cos zero here, for only resistive circuit, phi is equal to zero, then cos phi is equal to one. This is called maximum power dissipation. Next one is, if purely inductive or purely capacity circuit, in, in this case, what exactly happens is current and uh, voltage are current and voltage are at uh, 90 degrees. This only happens in resistive circuit and capacitive circuit. So if pi, pi is equal to pi by 2 cos 90 degrees, means pi is equal to 90 degrees, this only happens in two situations. One is capacity circuit and the other is inductive circuit. So phi is equal to 90 degrees, cos 90 is equal to zero. So in that case, if you multiply zero into something, it will become zero. So no power dissipation. This concept is known as wattless current. This concept is known as wattless current. So that is why in the old uh, meter, power meters, this was a problem that was uh, wattless current means whenever people are going uh, like on a uh, holiday, they used to switch off everything and go. And then the power, you then once you come back, the uh, you know, the power meter uh, used to have a uh, abrupt uh, motion and because of that, the electricity bill used to be very high or something like that. So now in the in the new new uh, system, they have removed all this, eliminated this wattless current concept, okay? Now LCR series uh, circuit, this is already the formula which we got from there, okay? So power dissipated at resonance is NCR circuit is what XC is equal to XL, that is phi is equal to zero and cos phi is equal to one. So the formula is what P is equal to I squared Z or which is also equal to VI. Okay. If you happen haven't cop copied, please do it. Okay.
Please copy this one. Then we'll go to the next concept that is uh, a transfer. Now, next is what transfer money. So see, if you want to increase the voltage or decrease the voltage, if you want to increase the voltage or decrease the voltage, we need yeah, the device. If the device is known as a transfer money. See, if you want to uh, wake up, uh, wake her, no? So now, uh, if you want to increase, see, we, we, we never increase the current or decrease the current. Keep this in the mind. We never increase, the, increase or decrease the current. We increase the voltage and decrease the voltage. So this was a question, the reasoning question. Like The reasoning question is like, why do in the power lines, you know, power lines means that uh, high tension towers. You might have seen on the you know, roadside, high tension towers, very long, big towers and on that, wires are mounted on that one. So those wires are high, very high voltage. How much? 1 lakh 32,000 volts or 1 lakh around 23,000 volts, something like that. Very high voltage is there. But current is not that much. Okay, why do we go with high voltages and low currents? Any reason behind it? Why do we go with high voltages and low currents? Can't we go with high current and low voltage? Yes. Can so, anyone say the answer? Yeah. Yeah. So can you repeat again? See, whenever in the power lines, when we are using, when we are passing the current in the power lines, we go with very high voltage and low currents. Instead, we could have gone with high current and low voltage, right? But sir, if there's high current, then uh, there's a high chance of short circuit and all that, right? No, and actually what happens is high current, suppose if we, are, we are passing high current through the wire. The wire is also having a resistance, right? The wire is having resistance. Yes. So the wire will become red hot. There is a possibility that after a few days, there will be a skin effect. Skin means peeling, peeling of the wire. Then the wire may break after a few days. Got it? When it becomes red hot, is it not? When, when it becomes red hot, then what will happen? There is a possibility that it will break also. Clear? Yeah. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, now, so that is why we don't go with high currents and low voltages. We go with high voltages and low currents. Now, see, we will start with the transformer now. In the transformer, and on one more thing, transformer can, can be only applied for AC currents. You cannot apply for DC currents. Keep that in the mind. Only AC current. We can increase or decrease the voltage of AC current. We cannot increase or decrease the a DC current. Understood? That's not possible. Now, now, so in transformer we have like, uh, this is the thing, like we have a primary coil and a secondary coil. There is a primary coil and there is a secondary coil. So this is the primary and this is a secondary. Okay, so here we say this is primary, this is primary coil and primary coil and this is uh, secondary coil. Primary coil and secondary coil. Okay. So number of turns on primary is NP, number of turns on secondary is NS. Current in primary is IP, current in secondary is IS. Okay. And, and uh, uh, we call voltage on primary is VP and voltage on secondary is VS. Is that clear? So NP is number of turns on primary, IP is in, uh, current in primary, and IP VP is voltage in the primary. Similarly, NS is uh, number of turns on secondary, current in secondary coil and Vs is voltage in the secondary coil. Is that clear? Now, so uh, this is primary coil, this is secondary coil. So what happens? See, we will see how it works. Now suppose this is the vol AC voltage I have given to this. When I give AC voltage, what will happen? There is a current is changing. Okay, the polarity of uh, the polarity is changing uh, 50 to 60 times in one second. When the current is changing, what happens? When the that means when the current is changing due to the induction process, what will happen? Magnetic the ma so around it there is a magnetic field. There is a changing magnetic field. Is it a constant magnetic field or ch changing magnetic field? Changing magnetic field. Changing magnetic field. Changing current produces changing magnetic field. Changing current produces changing magnetic field. When there is a changing magnetic field, around it there is a that the changing magnetic field here. This changing magnetic field will go here. This changing magnetic field will go here. Changing magnetic field will induce current in the secondary coil. 
changing magnetic field. Constant magnetic field cannot induce current in any coil. You know that, right? As per the Faraday's, as per the Faraday's law of uh, electromagnetic induction or Lenz law, you know that what exactly happens. So, 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 <clears throat> one second. Now, so what happens is when there is a changing, when there is a changing uh, current, it produces changing magnetic field. Okay. So changing magnetic field is here. Is that clear? See, once again, when there is a, when there is a changing current, the changing magnetic field is produced. Changing magnetic field will induce current in the secondary coil. Current in the secondary coil. So that is how the current is induced or produced in the secondary coil. Now, so now, uh, uh, <clears throat> so here we have the formula as per the uh, Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. Okay, as per the Faraday's uh, Faraday's law. What is Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction? Faraday's law of EMI, electromagnetic induction. What is the formula? He says that the uh, E E must e induced to EMF. Power. Induced EMF is equal to minus n into d phi b d phi by d t. Okay. Number of turns into d phi by d phi by d t. Here, what is that? So here, phi is phi is known as the phi is known as the flux in the phi is known as the flux. Okay, flux in each turn in the core at the time t due to current in primary when a voltage Vp is applied. Induced EMF or voltage or secondary NS. So now, so alternating flux phi induces an EMF called back EMF in the primary. So what happens? Now, again, what happens when the current is induced in that? Again, there is a changing magnetic field. See, because of the changing changing current, changing magnetic field was produced. That change, because of the changing magnetic field, a changing current has been uh, induced in the secondary coil. Now, when there is a changing mag uh, current here, again, there is a changing magnetic field. Again, that also can come back here. So, that is known as a back EMF of, or self-induction. We studied in the previous chapter, back EMF of self inductance okay now so now we have the formula we we will write here es and ep okay so we have ep is equal to what ep is equal to n uh, minus np into d phi b d phi by dt okay minus np into d phi by dt similarly es is equal to what minus ns into d phi by dt okay these are the two formulas ep and es now <clears throat> so here what is the formula for uh, so this is the formula we got. Now we also know that instead of writing um, instead of writing like this, so we can also write here v, Vp and Vs. This can be written as Vp is equal to minus Np into d phi by dt. Similarly, we can write here uh, n n sorry. Instead of Es, we are writing Vs. Vs is equal to minus Ns into d phi by dt. If we cross multiply this, what will happen now? Vp by Np is equal to what or yeah vp by np if you take it so what will happen now it will become minus d phi by dt similarly here also here also we have vs by uh, ns is equal to what minus d phi by dt now because both are same this and this is same equation one and equation VP two by NP is equal to vs by ns so we will write here vp by vp by np is equal to what we can write vs by ns so if you cross multiply this, we can write Vp by Vs is equal to Np by Ns. So this is the formula we got from the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. Okay. <clears throat> hmm. Okay. So, <clears throat> so Vp by Vs is equal to Np by Ns. Clear? So we have primary... So in this case, primary resistance and current are small. Suppose if it is suppose we have uh, v uh, ns np is uh, greater than ns. What is this transformer called? Step down transformer. Yeah, step step down, right? Yeah, it is it is step down transformer. Step down transformer. What about suppose step down transformer? Suppose NP is less than NS. What is this transformer called? Step up. Step up. Step up transformer. Very good. So step up transformer. Okay. Step up transformer. So we have step down transformer and step up transformer. Okay. 
<clears throat> so now, so if you say the power here, power P is equal to that if the transformer is efficient, okay. If for ideal transformer, okay. If it is ideal, ideal transformer, ideal transformer, what happens? Uh, eta is equal to what? Uh, one or hundred percent, whatever it is. So in that case, power input will be equal to power output. So power input equal to power output. So we have what? V uh, P is equal to V I I V I. Okay. Oh, sorry, primary I will write. Primary, primary, which is equal to what? Vs, Is. If you cross multiply this, Vp by Vs is equal to what? Is by Ip. Okay, Is by Ip. So we got these two. Vp by Vs is equal to Is by Ip. So if you put it together, all the three equations together, we can write here Vp by Vs equal to what? Ip by Is, which is equal to what? Np by Ns. Is that clear? Vp by Vs is equal to Ip by Is, which is equal to Np by Ns. Okay. So once again, from the beginning, see here, transformer is a, what is a transformer? It is a device which is used to increase or decrease the voltage. Okay. Voltage, not the current. We never, we never increase or decrease the current because of the, because of the resistive effects of the uh, coil or resistive effect of the uh, conductor or the uh, wire. Now, so here we are, this is the changing current. This is primary and this is secondary. NP number of turns on primary, number of turns on secondary. IP number of uh, current in primary, this is current in secondary. Voltage in primary, voltage in secondary. Now, when we change the, when we change the uh, AC current here, when we change the current here, what will happen? There is a changing magnetic field. That changing, with the changing, when the changing magnetic field goes to the other coil, what will happen? So here there is a current is induced because of the changing magnetic field. So maybe there is again, when there, when there is a changing current in this, again, there is a changing magnetic field. Again, it will go back and that will give rise to back EMF. Okay. But okay, that you leave it. Now, Faraday's electro, law of electromagnetic induction says that E is equal to minus N into D5 by DT and e, EP and ES. Okay. So we can also, if you cross multiply that, we get that VP by NP is equal to VS by NS. VP by VS is equal to NP by NS. So NP is greater than NS, which is known as step down transformer. NP is less than NS, which is equal to step up transformer. Okay. So in ideal transformer, eta is equal to one. Efficiency is one. Means whatever an ideal transformer is, output and input both are same. But that doesn't happen. Right? Because there are some, some losses are taking place in the transformer. That I will discuss now. What are the losses and what are what is the what are ideal transformers? Okay. Both the things I will discuss now. Now uh, we have here uh, in that case we are equating this power formula, then cross multiply it, and you bring these two together, then we get this formula. Okay, this is very very important. Definitely there will be a numerical, maybe one marker, maybe two marker. Definitely there will be a numerical from this particular concept. Okay, of a transformer. So what is a transformer? It is a, it it is a device. Okay, it is a device. It is a device which transfers electric energy, which transfers, which transfers electric energy from electric energy from from uh, primary winding to secondary windings, primary windings to primary windings to secondary windings primary windings to secondary windings so this is the transformer a transformer is a device which transfers electric energy from primary winding to secondary winding so this is the thing then we'll discuss about the losses okay what are the efficiency if it is 100 percent if the efficiency is 100 percent efficiency is what i'll write here so efficiency uh, efficiency Efficiency is what eta is equal to what output upon input into hundred percent. Okay, output upon input into hundred percent. So efficiency, if it is hundred percent, then it is an ideal transformer. Now, so we can also write like this: output upon input means it can be output energy upon input energy. We can write like this: eta is equal to output energy divided by input energy into hundred percent. You can write like this: hundred percent or eta is equal to what? Power output upon power input into 100%. We can write in both the ways. Okay. We can write in both the ways. Next is what here? Next is uh, what are the losses in the transformer? They are asking this question also. What are the losses, losses in the transformer? 
what are the losses in the transfer so what are they so uh, <clears throat> energy losses energy losses okay energy losses in the transfer for number one that is that is what uh, resistive flux leakage <laughs> that is flux leakage so what is flux leakage so see what happens is this primary and secondary coil in practical when you take a transformer how it is you know they keep the primary coil and secondary coil in a in a uh, metal chamber rectangular chamber you might have seen if you go near the any uh, Siva or Deva, when you see the transformer house, that's the, you can see transformers lying they, uh, on a platform. So they're like metal, they're like metal cubi cuboids. In that, this primary and secondary coil is fixed. But when but there is oil in it. Okay, that oil is said to be transformer oil. It's like a dielectric medium. Okay, it's like a dielectric medium. So transformer. So to prevent flux leakage. Okay, flux leakage means. So around it, there is a magnetic, in the, around the primary also, there is a magnetic flux. Around secondary also, there is a magnetic flux. So some flux may leave, may leave the transformer. So that is said to be flux leakage, okay. So can be it can be minimized by primary or secondary, okay. It can be, uh, it can be minimized. It can be minimized. Minimized primary or secondary, okay. This is the first uh, leakage, Sec first disadvantage. Second is resistance of the windings. Second is resistance of the resistance of the winding. winding. Okay, resistance winding means primary and secondary winding will be there. It can be minimized by using thick wires. Okay. Thick wires. So it can be minimized. How to minimize? Minimized using, using thick wires. Using thick wires. Okay. Using thick wires. Third one. Third one is what eddy currents. Eddy currents. Eddy, you know eddy currents. What are eddy currents? When uh, simple example, eddy currents. Like suppose there is a there is a magnet. There are these are the two poles of the magnet, and there is a metal fork, something like this. A metal fork is uh, oscillating between the two poles of the magnet because of the because this this metallic fork is cutting the magnetic lines of forces. Current is induced in this one because. The magnet this because the fork the metallic fork is cutting the magnetic lines of forces current is induced in this one when current gets induced in this one around it there is a magnetic field that magnetic field and this magnetic field they both will repel each other but this cannot move this cannot come to rest this is already at rest and it is fixed only this will slowly come to rest okay this will slowly come to rest okay how it comes to rest that energy is converted to heat energy that energy is converted to heat energy. That that type of current, that current is said to be what eddy currents. Okay. Eddy currents. Now, eddy current it here can we be have reduced uh, by using laminated core. Yeah, laminated. It can be core. Okay. It can be it can be reduced. It can be reduced using laminated core. What is the meaning of laminated core? Laminated cores. You know, 